All right, what is up guys, Luthier here, and today we're going to be completing the third part to the metagame analysis, and I did want to say sorry for not uploading. Um, I know I promised I would do an episode a week, um, and maybe more, uh, depending on the audience for it, but um, I got really busy with school because school was ending, and I had a lot of exams and whatnot, and I'm still preparing for an exam in the fall, so I've been really occupied with other stuff. Um, that being said, uh, I will be trying to get back into this. I haven't decided if I'm going to be playing in Slam or not, but if I do, I will be recording every single video and posting that to my channel. Not only just LC Open, but the other Opens as well. Um, another thing is, this being the last part to the metagame discussion, um, I'm going to be needing replays, uh, to be looking into for the replay analysis portion of this series. So please, like, if you guys have any replays, leave them in the comments or put them or, or like DM me on Discord. Um, my username is Luthier number one five seven eight. I'm pretty sure. Um, and if you can't find me through that, I will be in the LC Discord. So um, you can just, you know, tag me with a replay in the LC Discord, and then I can get that going. Um, Anyway, so we're going to be wrapping up the third part of the metagame discussion, and then because there is a DLC coming out right before LC Open, um, I probably we will be putting out another one uh, right before the LC Open so you guys can understand what exactly the new mods are doing and what you guys can be doing to um, you know get used to them and then learn from them and whatnot. So, yeah, um, we're going to be actually covering... Not that much today, but we have Volby, and I actually moved it out of alphabetical order because I wanted to talk about Volby at the end. Um, but yeah, so let's just get right into it. So we're going to start off with Cellos today, and um, this mod is really weird because it started off as like a meme sort of pick because it was like really one of the only good Corefish answers in the meta because everything realistically got trashed on it. And like Corefish was super, super good early on. Um, in SS, like back in Drifloon meta with Qfly and whatnot. And because of that, everything was really running like there was a lot of like Ferrisseed and whatnot. And because of that, what you would do is you'd run a lot of Corefish, and Corefish would obviously put a lot of pressure on Ferrisseed because it had to check not only the Corefish in front of it, but along with the Drifloon and whatnot. So, like, you really would not get a solid way of checking um, Corefish. And then there was Pablo or. Laroxel, I'm not really sure who because there's like a discrepancy between who actually made the team or with Shellos and whatnot, but um, both of them really popularized the use of Shellos, but mostly mostly this Shellos right here, the Toxic Staller one. Um, but I just really want to cover everything while I can. But um, yeah, so I do have some opinions regarding some of these sets and something that can be really good. But we will get into that step by step. But the first thing we're going to start off with the dual dance uh, shell. So this is like, um, I ended up actually bringing this to an SPL game, I think, versus Alcione, uh, week nine versus Sharks. Um, but the idea is that once you trap, like, Oddish, uh, mainly really just Oddish and, like, why not? There's not, not much in the tier that can actually really stop this other than, like, maybe Tauntmons and whatnot. So, um,. The idea is that you get up your acid armor and you get up your amnesia. Obviously, you're going to be prone to stuff like crits and whatnot. Um, but you should be able to be everything with with Scald. And the reason you want to get rid of Oddish is because um, Oddish has that recovery. Oh, sorry. Another thing. Marini. So Oddish, Marini, and Why Not. Those are going to be the three things that mainly stop Shellos. So the problem is those, well, th mostly Marini and Oddish, those are rampant in the tier right now. Um so, like, it's really hard to use this uh, without pairing it with something that deals with both of them. So, usually you're going to be pairing this with something like Why Not? Because Why Not is going to be able to trap the Marini and it's going to be able to trap the Oddish. So, this is something you want to be running in conjunction with that. Um, you're going to hit 13 speed because you want to be as fast as possible. You want to be able to at least, like, obviously you don't want to um, run, four well, not obviously, but you don't want to be running 14 because once you run 14 speed, then you have to take away from uh, defense, which you don't want to be doing because this still is going to be your... Um, Corfish answer, you can't really, you have to, you have to still roll compress even though you want to make this, um, even though you want to make this your win con, you have to roll compress and, uh, try to stack in this as your Corfish answer or else you're going to be pretty weak to Corfish. Or if you end up adding something else to deal with Corfish, your team's going to be weaker versus other things, which you really can't afford. So 
Yeah, this the idea is that once you double boost with uh, spit off and defense, not really much beats you, even like super effective hits. And again, there are no there are no good electric types in the tier other than like Chin Chao, which um, is actually pretty good now. Um, it, this was also used really before Chin Chao saw the surge in usage, so it's kind of outdated. But the idea is still that you're going to be playing around with crits and whatnot. So you're going to try to limit that as much as possible by removing the checks to it, which are like electric types, grass types, and whatnot. So that is what the idea behind this set is. And then we have the Toxic Staller set. Now, this is going to be like um, the more the set that you're more accustomed to seeing. Um, the Dual Dance set, um, it's really not that common. Um, but the Toxic Staller set is definitely the one that's used more by Pablo and Laroxil. But um, I don't know the exact spreads on this. I just copied it from the Dual Dance spread because I just assumed that would be very similar. But the idea is that you're running Toxic over um, Amnesia in this case. So like what Toxic does is it basically puts stuff like, you know, Spritzy, um, Spritzy, like any, any other mod that can really recover in uh, the face of Shellos um, on a timer. So like possibly even like back in the time when it was actually run like Roos cutie fly you would put uh toxic on it and you'd be able to stall out the cutie fly that way and then it also helps it's it's primarily here for um spritzy um because this ends up pairing well with stuff like fighting spam and whatnot um obviously it still doesn't really able it's, not, it's still not able to hit marini or or a oddish so th that's something that has to be kept in mind and you really don't have a, a way of hitting either of them like you have ice beam i guess for like um oddish but you still don't want to be like running an offensive shells and you definitely need like a lot of investment in order to um a beat in order to beat an oddish 1v1 so that's like something you really don't want to be running um i personally don't think either of these sets are very very good right now because marini and oddish are very very good in the tier and whatnot um but like they, they still can see some usage um personally i think if you're going to be running a defensive shell house, you definitely need to be running this set um it runs like scald scald to be able to burn and whatnot obviously recover because you need to recover and then earth power to hit marini i don't think it two ko's unless you knock it uh but that's just something to figure out and then you have clear smog to be able to um deal with the core fish setting up dragon dance or swords dance in front of you so um if you don't want to be playing around with like scald burns and like praying you get a scald burn you can just instead of get instead of that just take the 100 percent uh clear smog and then you can deal with core fish that way and this one you just want to be running a bit more bit more um diff like hp and speed f you don't really need the speed for much because you're not trying to like you know play around with crits and outspeed um this is just straight up get in there uh versus a core fish try to like burn it or neutralize it and then switch and then like recover to max and then switch out um i don't know why i didn't address this but this pokemon has the ability to um ability of sticky hold and what that does is it basically means that no matter what knockoff does you can't it just doesn't get rid of you uh it doesn't sorry it, no matter if they click knockoff it doesn't get rid of your violate which is really important lc as especially as a defensive pivot because that just means that you can not only check corefish but you can also check other knockoffers such as ponyard and then you can try to like um you try to beat you can be volibee that way as well because um brave bird i think brave bird does it's like it's close to two KOing, but I don't think it actually does. And the thing is, you can always recover up on the Brave Bird, and eventually you'll just be able to make them take the recoil for you to be able to beat at one v one. So that's just something important to note. And my personal favorite set, um, I want to discuss a set because I think it's actually really, really good right now. Um, although I've just theory mined with it, and I haven't really brought it. Um, I think that Shallows um, with Facade is actually a super good set uh, and Curse. So the difference between the other sets I had presented was um, one, obviously this doesn't get any sort of, um, it doesn't get stab move. And two, it's running Curse instead of um, Acid Armor, right? Yeah. Um, Iron Defense, Acid Armor, same thing. So what happens with running Curse is obviously boost ups much slower, but the thing is when you do boost up and get to plus six, which is the ideal situation, you end up getting the boost for your facade as well. And so this actually ends up beating stuff like Marini, Oddish, Pharisee, all this stuff 1v1. Well, maybe not so much Pharisee because it can just like get good during or bolted crit you, but um, 
the idea is that this set actually ends up being Oddish and Marini 1v1. So that's just something you guys want to be made aware of. I think this is very good in the tier right now because just a standard bulky water is pretty good typing, defensively at least, and then you get Curse on top of it. Um, again, with no real good electric types other than Chinchou, which gets trapped, which gets trapped very easily, this Shellos can actually present itself as a very big danger. And then there are no good grass types either. There's like Bulbasaur. Um, and we will get into Sun later. Uh, I plan on putting a video out on like why I think Sun should be banned. But I think once Sun is neutralized or banned, I think this set will actually put in a lot of work, and I think it will actually legitimately be like an like an A tier mon. Um, I mean, you can call me crazy, and again, it's just theory mining, so I can't really say much. But I think outside of Sun matchups, this will present itself as a very good, um, very good mod to take note of. Um, another thing is that because there are no ghost types in the tier anymore, especially with Ghastly being banned, um, like Shallows can definitely put in a lot of work. I mean, Pumpkaboo, I think, I think Pumpkaboo is still in the tier. I'm not sure, <laughs> to be honest, but obviously it's, it doesn't have the viability that other mons do, so I don't think you should be really worried about it. Um, but yeah, I think, I think Shallows is definitely something that can be good in the future. I don't really like these sets honestly but um i think this set can actually put in a lot of work in the future if um people can get on the wave of banning sun which i honestly think should happen but anyways that's shellos and the next one we have is spritzy oh baby okay um i think spritzy is one of the most underrated mons in lc right now and i think it's absolutely ridiculous that people aren't prepping for it properly so obviously we have the standard um the defense of Spritzy, which runs like Moonblast, Wish Protect, and basically Fighting Check. I mean, there's really not much to describe for it. There's Combine, the variant people can run Combine, other people can run Covet. Um, obviously, you have Aroma Veil, uh, which basically does not denies Taunt um, and whatnot. But the idea is that it just sits on things and then Wish Protects and then passes to others. So it's like a very good pivot, especially with uh, Wish Protect. Um, however, the one thing I. I think people need to start understanding is that you cannot go to a game without a fairy resist like and marini cannot be your fairy resist either um i think people need to be running fairy seed on almost every team fairy seed are like a ponyta on almost every team because if you don't run those two rather run either of those two you're going to be incredibly incredibly weak to spritzy um like marini i understand we'll get into the speed set um but this is the the set that carried over from SM, which is basically nasty plot, um, trick room with moonblast and psychic, and that's just gonna be able to hit everything that's not a steel type, um, which is literally just like Pharisee and then like a fire type, which is like Ponyta. But Pony Ponyta will just still take like it'll still take like fifty percent um, at plus two, so like you'll still be able to two a KO it, which is very important to know. But um, this runs nine speed. Um, you can. Opt to put it down to, I think it was like six or seven. It was a seven. Oh, no, it can go to six. Yeah, it goes to six. If you choose to go to this variant, what this does, it means that you will be able to outspeed, well, outspeed um, Trap Inch. Well, outspeed, I meant to put in like quotation marks, but like you, you'll you outspeed Trap Inch under Trick Room, um, which means that you don't have to worry about like a super slow earthquake um trying to you know stop your way of winning with spritzy so that's just something you can go about with spritzy um it's really good because the nasty plots up on fighting types um and then you can trick room up on whatever and then i think this is oh my god i i can't believe that people are not prepping for the spritzy properly because this spritzy is absolutely busted um it is so so good basically what you're doing is you run max special attack max speed and what this hits with 12 is you're gonna outspeed most Marinis, and this is why I think that Marini, you need to be running at least 13 speed right now. And if you're not running 13 speed Marini, you're inherently making yourself weak to this kind of spritzy. Um, the thing is, you just nasty plot up, and then you psychic, and then you moonblast, and you drain kiss like that. That that coverage hits almost everything in the tier, and everything just drops at plus two. Like it's just very very strong. Um, the thing is, I think this set is absolutely busted on webs. I invented this um, Nasty Plot Spam uh, team, which we can look in, into in the team building episode. Um, but basically, this set under webs can just cause havoc. It is so good. And the another, another tech that I actually had made is that um, instead of running Draining Kiss, you can run Encore. And so what Encore does is it prevents any sort of setup uh in for mons in front of you and at the same time it also punishes the greed 
for people who go into Pharisee on Spritz. So the idea is that you can just nasty plot. Um, well, let's just say that you double in a Spritz on their double in Pharisee. So you have like a neutral uh, Spritz in front of their Pharisee, and they haven't clicked up Stealth Rock yet. Every single human in that situation is going to be clicking Stealth Rock. I don't like there is almost no scenario in which you do not click Stealth Rock up. Okay, and so the idea is that you nasty plot up. And then as they click Stealth Rock, you have the Encore, okay? And so you Encore them into Stealth Rock, and then you can fire off a Moonblast um, or a Psychic, whichever one you feel is, like, necessary in that scenario. But basically, there's no mon... There's, like, there's not much... There's no, like, team that's realistically that good that can deal with a a spritzy that doesn't have its Pharisee because again the Pharisee is neutralized because you have it it's it's encored in the stealth rock there's you basically just get a free kill through that so that is just something um that i thought of when i was theory mining and i actually ended up using it for um an lcpl uh week and it actually turned out pretty good although it didn't get to really show off that tech i think it's just something that people should start using because i think it's very good um anyways that's spritzy um Please, please start prepping for this because like if you do not, then you're going to be you're going to be very screwed once this starts to roll around because I think I think this set is going to start pick up, picking up traction very soon. It is really, really good. Um, another thing is that with hitting 12 speed, you're going to be able to outspeed Oddish and Oddish is a lot of the time one of the fairy resists that people rely on and I just don't think it's a very good idea to, re to rely on that as a fairy resist. But anyways, that's going to be Spritzy and then... Okay, cool. And then moving on, we have uh, Timber. Now... I'm fully aware that none of the, like, all of these aren't going to be the best timber sets. Like, I know for a fact that these are not all the right timber sets. Um, they're definitely more, and they're definitely more variants. But all of them really accomplish more or less the same goal. Um, well, the bulk up is a little special one because it, it's basically, it's well, it's guts. Um, and the idea is that you're going to be able to beat, like, Marini 1v1 um, and whatnot. And then you have bulk up. And so, like, this is... Primarily there for when you want to punish people that don't tend to run like Oddish and Spritzy often. Um, for people that don't really don't run those two mons often, this can really just run through a team. Especially because they're no really good uh, like special attackers right now. Like the only good, like not even good ones. I think Wing I think Wingle is okay. Um, but like other than Wingle, um, which again hasn't seen that much usage. Um, there's really just like Pony, Pony G. And like there's not much other special attackers in the tier. Um, well, at least, like, offensive ones. So, like, you can really bulk up, and then you can just start, you know, throwing off a bunch of funny-type moves. And this, uh, Guts helps for stuff like Pony, like regular Pony. Um, but anyways, that's just, like, the bulk of Timber. And then the standard support, Timber, is gonna be, like, the knockoff, um, uh, Drain Punch, d like, Defog, which it gets now. You can be running Iron Fist or Guts, either of them work. Um, and this set is running 12 speed just because, um, you want to be able to outspeed, um, you know, like do piters and stuff like that and throw off knockoffs. Um, you can run guts for scalds and whatnot. So, um, there's really not much to say, uh, for like timber because it's a good mon. Um, and if you give it enough defense, which if you give it like 15 defense, uh, what it does is this means it's going to be able to survive a brave bird from full against a volibee. And because all volibees are going to be running, um, weak armor right now. Well, almost all of them are running weak armor right now. What happens is drain punch um, on a switch in uh, to their Volby. So you drain punch on the switch in to their Volby. You um, activate their weak armor. Um, and then you can drain punch on the turn after. And then you'll come out of the exchange with like 50% health and their Volby is gone. So um, that's just something you guys can uh, think about when you guys are, you know, custom tailoring your um, your timber spreads. So there's that. And then there's the all out attacker, which is basically like thunder punch knockoff. Drain Punch, Mock Punch, and you're going to be running Iron Fist on this. And the other thing I wanted to address is um, Timber is one of the few mons that you can tailor to survive like a plus two weather ball from full against a Bulbasaur and Sun. Um, so sometimes people, when they're trying to soft check, soft check Sun is what they'll do is they'll, instead of running uh, Thunder Punch, uh, you'll be running Ice Punch or Fire Punch. Um, the thing is, the reason you don't really have to run a lot of Ice Punch um, in this meta is because you want to be getting rid of Marini more than you want to be getting rid of Oddish. Um, also, like, usually when you're running Thunder Punch on Timber, you'll be pairing it with, like, um, like a Pharisee or something. And this helps you soft check, soft check around, like, Oddish. And Oddish always forces itself to be, um, it, it forces itself to scout for it. 
and you have to at least like give it some thought and like um at least recognize the fact that there is a possibility um that timber could basically have one of those other uh either of the two elemental punches that will be able to knock it out so that's just something important to know and as as of that you can basically get a little greedy and then run thunder punch for marini and whatnot um either way this is like no matter what set you really run on timber unless you're running like guts not not even guts like sheer force poison jab you're not going to be able to really effectively beat a spritzy 1v1 anyway so like you can either be running like thunder punch or fire punch um i don't think ice punch is that good in the meta right now because like fire punch at least hits harder for oddish and like bulbasaur and sun and then thunder punch hits um Volibi and marini so like i don't really see much of a need for ice punch i'm sure there probably is one um but i i prefer to be running like thunder punch or fire punch i think those are the two better ones right now but anyways um again timber you can you can really cu customize it any way you want you're never going to be able to effectively like tell from preview what exactly the timber is um unless like there's like if, if your opponent has no form of hazard control which is really weird because that means they're not running a volby then probably you're going to be thinking about um them being like a defog timber or whatever but like other than that you you really won't be able to tell like what like a timber is in front of you at team preview at least but just be cognizant that these are the three most important sets you want to be looking about and again tail ring spreads they're gonna be running like 14 speed I, I saw jake actually bring 14 speed timber against me in um in spl so just like be aware of that um and then it could be running like knockoff defog and then either of like the three elemental punches so yeah, anyways, that's going to be Timber, and then we're going to be getting into some interesting mods. And the next one we're going to cover is Trap Inch. Um, Bandit Trap Inch is something that I had theory mod. Um, it's kind of weird, because like the idea is that the it, it's really here only for like Ferrocede. Ferrocede and then like a huge first impression power. And like this doesn't even tra like trap Onyx, because you get 2 KO'd by Earthquake. Um... But yeah, like, it, it, it's not bad. It's very, it has a very, like, distinct niche. And I don't think it's that worth it to run Bandit when the utility provided by stuff like, um, stuff like the regular Violet Trap Inch is a lot better. But anyways, that's just going to be Bandit Trap Inch. It's really not that common at all. I don't think it's that good. Um, but anyways, moving on, we have the regular Trap Inch, which is going to be the Violet variant. And now this, this variant is probably much better. The spread was passed to me uh, by one of my friends. But, um, uh, let's see. So, like, we have Earthquake, uh, obviously, just because it's Earthquake, it's Stab. And, um, then you have Giga Drain, because Giga Drain is going to be able to deal with Onyx. So, what happens is, um, Trap Inch pairs very well with stuff that hates Onyx and Ponder. So, a lot of the time, you're going to be see seeing Trap Inch paired with stuff like Volibi. Stuff like, well, it was paired with Rufflet. Now the Rufflet is banned. Um, but it paired, Trap Inch paired very well with Volibee and whatnot, uh, because it effectively removed either rocks because of, uh, the Onyx was forced to double, or it removed the Onyx itself, kept up rocks, um, and then made it very, and made your opponent's team very weak to Volibee. So, those are the two things that, uh, Trap Inch really did. Um, and the idea is that, like, with the spread, you're going to be always going to be, you're going to always live a Earthquake, uh, an earthquake into another earthquake from onyx so um Gidrain actually lets you heal up and then quick attack um you can also run faint i guess um but the faint is like a bit weaker even though it has like a higher um it's on the, it's on a different bracket for the priority um but giga drain into quick attack will be able to effectively get rid of most onyxes almost all onyxes and then you have first first impression for um whatchamacallit like the strong strong priority um you also have Earthquake. Now, the thing with uh, trying to trap things like Ponyard is that, like, you're, if they knock you off into an Iron Head, then you're playing around with Rolls and Iron Head Flinches, which you really don't want to be doing. So, with Ponyard, you sometimes might want to toss out, like, a sack and then go into Trap Inch and then beat the Ponyard that way. Um, those are some different things you can go about to get guarantee that you can deal with Ponyard. Um, but, yeah. Um, there's not really much to say about about the spread other than the fact that it guarantees you everything you really need um i don't think you need to be ever running speed on trap inch um you're never outspeeding spritzy anyway so there's that um yeah I, it, it's a it's a good mod i think it's a very good mod um it's just outclassed by diglet um which is i think is like 
a very, very good mod right now. Uh, even better than it was in SM. But anyways, yeah, that's Trap Inch. And moving on, we have Wingo. So, uh, Wingo was... Hmm. So, I actually thought once I had um, started building and thinking about teams and whatnot, I thought Wingo was actually not good at all. But the more and more I think about it, the more and more I theory mod about it, I think it's actually very, very solid. Um, the problem is obviously Hurricane and the ability to get tilted off of it very, very easily. The other... There's not really much of an other set, um, but like some people can be running like um, berry juice with like sub roost. I know, um, I know Jox actually ran like sub a subset, um, not not a subset like a, a set that had substitute on it, but it was also life orb that had like scald hurricane and like knock off or something like that. So um, idea is that obviously you set your IVs to 19 because you want to take only one HP uh, recoil from life orb but with flying and water coverage you're gonna be able to like hit almost every single mod in the tier and with such a good speed stat of 19 you're gonna be hitting everything um without much of a punish and obviously since pursuit is gone Ponder isn't really gonna be able to deal with a wingle um which is very good uh for wingle and then the only mod that's gonna be outspeeding this in the entire tier is basically like any scarfer or um or diglet and diglet sometimes don't even run rock slide so that's just something really important to uh notice um volby has a the, the threat of running scalds and getting burns on everything uh if you're able to burn a Seed like on a switch in because Seed is probably one of the good ways of dealing with wingle there's like Seed and there's chinchow um even if you burn either of them not i both of them really do not have good ways of recovery like chinchow doesn't have any recovery and then um Pharisee only has a like Giga Drain. And like you can limit both of those from happening. If you can burn out both of them, then you can passively chip them for the like the rest of the game. And then you can effectively uh let Wingle Wingle run wild. So it's just up to you how you want to like abuse this. Um it is a bit luck oriented. That's the difference between um SS and SM. In SM you had like the Z fly, which just you know, nuke everything because it was just so strong. Um in S in SS you no longer have that benefit. So some people actually uh opt to run like air slash over um u-turn or knockoff so it's it's just based on taste um personally i think i think this mod is not that bad um it's just the fact that it's like weak to rocks and super frail and sometimes it doesn't even get guaranteed progress in a game if you especially like miss hurricane or if you um get like a turn wrong uh you're just in a really bad position otherwise so like if you're if you're like the type of person that relies or likes to rely on luck oriented stuff with like Wingle, I would heavily heavily suggest you going for Wingle because it's very good once you start connecting move. But if you're like the more um, reserved, like non aggressive, um, wanting to get like a win hundred percent kind of person, um, I'd suggest you not using Wingle, Wingle because I promise you you will get tilted very easily. <laughs> so um, basically. That's all there is for Wingull. Um, you can obviously alter sets a bit here around, maybe even change up the life orb uh, to berry juice, but then you're losing out on power because I'm pretty sure Hurricane knocks out Volby um, after rocks. Um, so that's just something to look out for. It's just a, it's just still strong. It's still a very strong mon. It's just that it's relying on luck, which I personally do not like at all. So yeah, that's Wingull. And then moving on, we got some more interesting mons, and we have the first one, which is Wubat. Um, so this that was actually made for, uh, made by Burnt Zebra, and he passes to me during SPL. Um, it's a very big matchup fish, and apparently it's actually pretty good on webs. Um, idea is that with simple, everything gets boosted um, at double the stages that it normally would. So instead of nasty plot boosting up two stages, you get um, boosted up four stages. So what that means is that you're able to set up on things like Marini. The problem is Marini oftentimes runs like knock and whatnot, which is kind of annoying. Um, but what what you can do is like if they don't run knock or whatever, um, you can you can basically nasty plot up. And then what that gets you to uh, because you get to pl uh, plus four, it means that you knock out Volby from full. Um, basically anything but if I like Volby, you will knock out from full. And the berry juice and sub is there. Sub is there basically because you want to be able to win against a pondered mind games um, with sucker punch, um, and so that's the reason you run that. Uh, but like a flying and a fire, um, you know, like fl uh, not flying. Sorry, psychic and fire basically hits everything in the tier. Um, nothing in the 
tier really beats this, um, especially under webs, because once you outspeed everything, um, with Sucker Punch mind games and whatnot, you're going to be able to effectively deal with it, and then the only strong priorities in the tier, again, Sucker Punch, uh, which you can outplay, and then you have uh, First Impression from Trap Inch, which doesn't even kill you from full, um, and then you have like Aqua Jet from Corefish. Obviously, you're never going to be 100% at full, because um, you have to be able to set up at a certain point. Um, but other than that, it's just, it's it's very strong, but I don't think it's that good because it's very limited in the sense that it's hard to set up. Um, I haven't used this, like, since Cutie Fly meta, and maybe it's different because Cutie Fly made it easier. I, I, I don't know. I, I haven't used this since Cutie Fly meta, and in Cutie Fly meta, there was a lot of, like, priority going around because you needed to be able to revenge Cutie Fly and whatnot. Um, I don't know how, how much the meta has really changed it, changed in that sense, but I still think that it would be, it, it'd be something interesting to try out. I just don't think it's that good. Um, it's hard to set up and, but once you, but if you are able to set it up, then it will definitely be a menace to deal with. So that is Wubat. Um, yeah. And then we're going to move on to why not. So why not really only has one set. Um, you're going to, you can really, you really do not want to be running the SM set, which is basically like 11 speed. And the reason for that, or no, 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 it ran nine speed. Sorry. The reason you don't want to be running nine speed is because a lot of the time the Marini are starting to creep. Um, same with Shellos. And if your Marini creeps this one V one, you can essentially evade getting trapped by why not, which is super, super annoying. And you do not want to do that because if you do get trapped by why not, then you're in a, if you don't get trapped by why not and your team, um, relies around like, I don't know, like a dual dance cellos or whatever, and you don't get tra and you don't trap a marini, then you're in a really, really bad position in that sense. So that is something uh, important to look out for if you're going to be using a why not. Um, so for that reason, you have to run max speed um, and then hit 13, so you can at least speed tie the 13 marinis or like the 13 speed cellosses and whatnot. So the idea is that you're just going to be able to switch into oddish, you know, all all these like fighting, a lot of the fighter resists, um, other than spritzy, and I'll get into that in a second. Um, you're going to be able to encore them into any move they go for, and then you can just counter or mirror coat respectively, depending on, depending on what they do. And then you also have Destiny Bond as just like a um, last minute way of dealing with anything. Um, the thing is with, um, the thing is you cannot trap Spritzy um, because with Spritzy, it has the ability Aurora, Aurora oh my god, Aroma Veil, uh, which denies any sort of like encore taunt and whatnot. So, you don't you don't really trap Spritzy, which is kind of annoying. But that being said, you still have Destiny Bond, which you can deal with uh, Spritzy in that manner. But I I think why not's actually pretty good. The problem is it's just like a it, it it's a matchup fish in the sense that it's it's either it gets a job done for like your the one one you want to get out of the way, which is either Audit like a Marini or whatever. Um, the problem is if like they don't have either of those, it's really hard to make why not work, especially because um, Timbers can outspeed this and whatnot, um, which is really rare, but it also deals with some sort of timbers. You just have to be very cognizant of the fact that they can click knock easily. And so sometimes, um, like even the other thing is you want to be running 13 speed because if you don't run 13 speed, then you might not be able to uh, speed creep most of the timbers that are in the meta right now. Um, that's another reason you want to be running 13, but it's just, it's just a very iffy mod. It's a match of fish and I, it's, it's okay. Um, I, I, I would definitely find, like, suggest finding better ways of going about, you know, trying to, like, trap. Um, but sometimes, like, if a team needs it, then you might as well just have to use a why not. So that's just going to be why not, and then we're going to move on to Zigzagoon. Now, um, there's really not much to say with Zigzagoon. Um, you pair this really with stuff like Trap Inch, because Trap Inch is going to be able to get rid of uh, Ponyard and Onyx. And by getting rid of those, those are basically the only solid um, normal resists in the tier, other than like Ferrisseed. And the thing with Ferrisseed is that again, it, it can get chipped very easily throughout the entire game. Um, and then let's see, the, it's it's oh sorry, um, the the Zigzagoon also pairs well with stuff like Diglett because you want to get the Memento support um, onto onto opposing mon and then what you do is you go into your zigzagoon to set up and then try to win there's really not much in the team that tanks uh in the tier that tanks 
uh, a hit from this if it's not resisted. The only mod I can really think of that tanks uh, a plus six extreme extreme speed is like a maybe a spritzy. Um, everything else will really drop um, other than Onyx and Pondered, which get trapped by Trap Inch. And then you have Ferris Seed. Ferris Seed, again, which can get easily pressured. The thing about Thief is that Thief is very good. Um, oh, also, if you run like a cert, uh, certain Timber, um, depending on like defense spreads, you can live it from full. But either way, um, you have Seed Bomb to hit Onyx uh, because nothing... You, usually Onyx cannot want it uh, KO you unless it has like Body Press or like Explosion. Um, so Seed Bomb can deal with Onyx that way. And then you have Thief. And Thief is going to be able to steal a um, item. And it also is able to steal the item from, like, Frillish. And what that allows you to do is it allows you to, like, you know, if they're just trying to toss a Frillish out, instead of just getting a kill with Seed Bomb, you can go for a Thief and then take their Violet after you use up their Berry Juice. So that's just something really um, important. Not Well, not important, but just something cool to look out for if you want to go on that route of using um, the Zigzagoon. The thing with Zigzagoon is whether you're playing against it or you're playing for it, you just have to be very, very cognizant about chipping the, the counters, um, which is basically just a normal resist. And then you also have to be very cognizant about in which situations can you set up. You can't really randomly set up on like a Vol because you'll get knocked, um, and then you won't be able to belly drum up. Um... But you can set up versus things like, I don't know, like a Ponyta. What you can do is you can toss them on out on your team and then go to Diglett, Memento on the Ponyta, and then you can set up with Zigzagoon. So it's just about being very smart and cognizant about in which situations can you go for a specific move that will um, be able to progress your Zigzagoon. Um, and oftentimes it might not be very clear at first, but it just takes practice to use Zigzagoon. And it takes a lot of practice actually to able to beat a Zigzagoon. You have to be very, very careful. You have to almost, it's like stepping on eggshells. You just have to uh, know about which mines you can go into at which point and which mines you have to keep extremely healthy without losing. Um, cause if you don't, if you don't keep those mines extremely healthy, you can lose the Zigzagoon pretty easily. Given that this is an incredibly big matchup fish, you also have to be pretty prepped for it prepped for it because you can just lose in six turns if your team has no normal resist and again with no ghost in the tier anymore which i mentioned earlier with uh shellos um with no ghost in the tier um other than maybe pumpkaboo I, I still don't even know if that's in the meta right now but um you can with thief actually hits pumpkaboo and pumpkaboo really never really runs more than like 10 speed or I, I don't even remember what it ran um so you'll still be able to knock it out um like with, without any ghost resist, you ha uh, ghost types you have to be very cognizant of keeping mons healthy um, because nothing in the tier will resist it. So that's basically uh, Zigzagoon. And moving on, we have oh boy, the big bad boy Volibi. Um, there is so much that goes into Volibi, and I don't even know how long I'm gonna be able to ramble on about this. But there is a standard Volibi, um, which runs this spread. You can also really run Adamant. Um, I heavily, heavily disagree with anyone that runs Adamant Volby. It doesn't change too many roles right now. And the thing is, being able to win speed ties against opposing Volby are very, very important. Very, very important. Um, that is something that I cannot stress enough. And people just tend to toss it out the window for no real apparent reason. And I don't agree with it at all. Um, but yeah, so the thing about Volby is it gets... Power, it gets it gets access to two incredibly strong stabs. Naga, which is probably one of the best mons and uh, best moves in LC, and then you have Brave Bird, which is just a super strong attack from a mon that gets you know 16 attack, um, which is really nice. And you have U-turn, which is pivoting power, which lets you you know um, pivot around on like Ponyards and Onyxes and whatnot. And then you have Defogus uh, has your control, which I had mentioned against which I mentioned on the Timber, when I was talking about Timber. Um, you want to be running Hazard Control on almost every team. Um, but if you're not volleying, ru like running Volibi, then you're putting yourself at an inherent risk. And something that uh, it should be noted is that oftentimes teams will only have really like one method of Hazard Control. You really rarely see stuff like Double Defog on a team because it's like, it's just, it's already hard enough to find Hazard Control on teams. Um, and fit it on and so running it on two different slots is really really difficult and pretty harmful for your team so 
Um, that's basically like the standard Volibee. I can go in on and rant on this all day long, but I just want you uh, guys to know that this is basically the standard the Volibee you're going to be seeing in almost every game. Um, almost every Volibee that you see is going to be this specific set. There are obviously other sets that it runs, but this is the most common set by far. Um, the second set we have is a set that really died down pretty fast, uh, but I think it's not that bad, is Scarf Volibee. Um, Scarf Volibee, uh, it's obviously super strong. I don't think it's that great. Um, it's good if you want to keep up, like, an extreme offensive pe uh, pressure while still running Overcoat. Um, yeah, there's really not much to it. it it's just fast. It avoids, um, webs. So, one of the big things is it's really, really good against webs because if you avoid uh, webs and then you're going to be able to hit 22 speed with um, this set, you're going to be able to outspeed the entire meta. Um, and this is just going to basically give you a very, very good way of pivoting around and then, you know, and whatnot. Uh, the thing is, like, it has... You really do not want to be running Defog on Scarf Volby because if they do predict you to switch in, then you just lose your Scarf, Scarf Volby. However, you can be running uh, Defog over Rock Smash. Rock Smash is really there just for Ponyard. Um... But yeah, that's going to be Scarf Volibee. And then we have the um, SM version of the Overcoat Volibee. Now, if you're really not running like a Pharisee or and what or, or stuff like that, you're going to be struggling because nothing in the tier outside like Pharisee and like maybe Badoo really like absorbs a spore from an Oddish. So for that reason, you can be running the Overcoat if you're that weak to Oddish, which is like a really weird thing because you... You usually don't want to be that weak to Oddish. Um, and then, like, there's, like, a team-building problem there. I don't really like to run over Cold Volibee because it doesn't provide the offensive pressure and offensive threat that regular, uh, that the all-out attacker Pivot Volibee does because you only have 12 attack. Um, that being said, it's still, it's still probably okay. Uh, I personally do not think you should use it. I think it's better off to just, you know, go around other routes of pressuring, um, pressuring a, um, an oddish so this is really the only reason that you want to be running the set basically if you just want to absorb a spore um specifically from like oddish or badoo which gets sleep powder i think um but anyways yeah that's going to be the volby and then we have the nasty plot set um so this is like a specific set um that i like to use there are definitely other sets um that run different things like i know serene grace um has his own set that instead of running the 14 speed he takes off a little hp adds adds it on here and then what he does is he actually drops um i think he drops dark pulse and instead puts roost and so what this does is it basically gives you a little more survivability against things like marinians other stuff you're going to be setting up on so the idea is that flying and fire i know um the like the thing with flying and fire is obviously you're going to be walled by like um which we call Oddix, but uh, you can also drop Air Slash and then run Dark Pulse. So it's like really up to you, um, but you definitely need Heat Wave because you definitely want to be able to hit things like Pondered and whatnot. But um, yeah, the idea is that you Nasty Plot up, um, and because of because of <laughs> oh my god, because of the Violet and Weak Armor, you're gonna be able to get uh, the plus two boost, and the Violet also gives you the extra survivability. As same as same with the um, with the uh, Roost. Um, what just happened? oops okay my bad um yeah so it gives you extra survivability with the roost and whatnot um and so that's the idea behind the nasty plot so usually this is very very good on webs um obviously it gets like not walled if you run if you run air slash over dark um over roost then you're not walled by spritzy anymore but like you really don't you really want um to run this in conjunction with something that pressures spritzy hard or knocks spritzy and whatnot so um this idea behind volibee it's very good like offensively in special attack too um not much really wants to take um the, something with this coverage because everything in the tier outside of like spritzy really just drops this kind of coverage um and it's just something really important to know and also after rocks a plus two air slash will kill the all-out attacker volibee from full so it's just something to look around for and then we have the nasty plot volibee now this was an sm set um and I don't know how good this is right now. Um, I'm not really super sure because Onyx is really good right now, and so is Ponyard. Um, and so the idea is that with Iron Defense, you're gonna be able to like stack up defensively against almost everything. And then you have Nasty Plot plus Air Slash, which is, which is just like a neutral coverage. Again, super hard walled by Spritzy. Um, 
However, you definitely can find ways of pressuring it and whatnot. But the idea is that with Volibee, um, with this Volibee at least, you have the Violet to provide sustainability, and especially you just stack everything to Spidef because you can't find, you don't have another way of uh, stacking up your Spidef. So what you just do is you spam your Iron Defense and you get your like, you get your defense all the way up to like 60. Um, and with a Violet boost, it would be like 80 something. Um, I don't think it hits 90 or whatever. The, the point is you just stack up your um, iron defense. Um, you get your defense really high and then you nasty plot and air slash. Obviously the problem with this is, um, well, Onyxes nowadays don't really run rock blast. They run like head smash. Um, but if they do run rock blast or like if you have a ponder in front of you, they can knock. If the ponder can knock and then it can just spam iron heads and eventually you'll get crit or flinch down. Um, something along those lines. And then if you have an, uh, someone has like an onyx in front of you and they go for like a head smash, for example, or even a rock blast. What you're doing is you're playing around with crits. Um, however, if you just don't get crit, the thing is with no really strong special attackers in the tier right now, um, this side is just gonna be able to just like you know prey on all the physical spam that's going on right now, so that's just something really important to know and look out for. But I think this set is ironically um, pretty decent. Um, it, it's just like it takes, it, it's very good against people that don't know the tier very well because this is not really a known set. Um, however, if you do know the if you do know the uh, the set, it's very easy to play around against, which is why I don't like to bring it in like high level tournament play. But you could definitely run this in like a low lower like um tournament in which people don't really know much of the metagame that well so that's just gonna be that's just basically gonna be the nasty plot set um with our defense and then we have the last set which is i just want to give a shout out to jake um who had this set um instead of running the iron the sorry the u-turn that we had ran in the all-out attacking set uh you can just run heat wave and what heat wave does is it deals with ferrocede and it deals with pondered at the same time um, obviously you're going to be dropping spit up because you want enough special attack to basically, uh, KO, um, a fairy seed from full. Um, you don't really mind losing spit up because as I said, they're not ma that many good special attackers, uh, special attacking mine in the tiers right now. Uh, um, so for that reason, you can just run minus spit up. Um, yeah, I mean, this, this, this side is actually pretty good. Um, obviously it doesn't really help much versus onyx but like if you can run this in paired with something like balloon diglet or like trap inch or whatnot this set can definitely just wreak havoc uh through teams um again as i said with the all attacking set knock off into a uh, knockoff and brave bird are just like two incredibly incredibly powerful moves because knockoff gets rid of the violate and then brave bird effectively becomes like effectively comes like a 180 base power move uh by that reason um, because of how it's knocked off, but the idea is that this also provides hazard control through defog while also keeping up pressure versus things like Ponard and Ferrisseed, which are very good in the tier right now. So that is going to be the Volibee. I, I know I didn't go super in depth with this, but, um, I will definitely be talking more about Volibee through all my future videos, but yeah, that's going to be the metagame discussion now. Um, I definitely will be updating this more and then talking more about metagame discussion and probably reference back to this list in the future videos. But as I said in the uh, start of the video, please, please send me replays and teams you want me to look into. Um, the next part of the series is going to be um, the team building. So now that I finished metagame discussions, I won't be posting like hour long videos. Instead, I'll be posting like short 15, 20 minute videos, which is the goal. Um, the goal is to be that long. But the idea is that we're going to be giving like short, small uh, lectures, and those are going to be more concise and easier to watch. Um, but as I was saying, please, please send me replays, send me teams. I will recreate all the replays that you guys send me so you guys won't see any names in them um, and people won't be hurt if I criticize any sort of play and whatnot. But yes, please, please send me those replays um, and I will see you guys next time. And we will be finally moving forward um and trying to address this um entire season series to like a bigger audience um now that we can refer to people that actually understand the tier uh and didn't have to sit through these hour-long videos so anyways thank you guys for watching and i will see you guys next time peace